Ready? All right, so we're going to talk about the structure of advising at the University of Utah. Uh, advisors work together and work with technology to meet students' needs. And so some of you may be new to the university. Some have been here a while. And so I just want to cover a few basics about the University of Utah. We're a Research One university. Uh, the University of Utah has a strong focus on research, and it really provides our students a lot of opportunities to be involved in research. Uh, I think we have one of the best undergraduate opportunities for students to do research. We have the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. Students can work with professors on research projects and actually even get paid while they're doing that research. And there's a lot of other research opportunities on campus as well. So great opportunities for students. We're part of the Utah System of Higher Education, or you'll hear it called UCHI, um, which means we're part of the, the state higher education system with schools like Weber State, Utah State, Dixie, it's now Dixie University, <laughs> uh, Southern Utah University, those. so we're all part of the same higher education system. Uh, we're accredited by the Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities, and we have colleges in humanities, social behavioral science, architecture and planning, fine arts, education, engineering, mines and earth sciences, science, law, pharmacy, nursing, and health, and we have schools of business, social work, and medicine. So a lot of different opportunities for students. There's over 70 different academic programs, and then even within those, there's a lot of official areas of emphasis within those different departments and majors. And so when we include all those emphases, there's well over 100 different possible majors for students to pursue. Um, we have se also have se several interdisciplinary degree programs. So these are programs that utilize courses from a lot of different areas to fit into one focus area. For example, we have international studies, environmental and sustainability studies, health society and policy, and all those programs utilize classes from different areas that have a focus in that area. So, and then, as many of you know, we are a member of the PAC-12, uh, joined the PAC-12 con conference in 2011. So, university has around 31,000 students, and about 23,000 of those are undergraduates. And Students are enrolled from all 29 counties in the state of Utah, all 50 states, and more than 100 foreign countries. And so we do have quite a diverse population. Uh, for, about 45% are women, 55% are men, and about 2,800 students live on campus. 28 is more than expected? Less than expected. Yeah, we are more of a commuter school. Uh, they are starting to build more housing on campus. There's a high demand for it. Uh, the residential halls fill up pretty quickly, and so there are plans for some more on-campus housing. But yeah, as now, out of 31,000, 2,800 on campus isn't that big. <laughs> so. All right, so the structure of advising at the U. So there's two kind of main areas uh, that students go to for advising. First one is for general advising in University College and the Transfer Center. And so University College is in charge of general education. So if students have questions on general education, then they could come to University College. Uh, we can help them as far as class selection for general education. Uh, if they're a transfer student and they have a course they think should fulfill general education, students can meet with the University College Advisor and we can review that and possibly see if it counts for a general education requirement. Um, we're also in charge of the DARS program, and which is the Degree Audit Report System. And so that's a document that students can generate that shows all their degree requirements, shows what they've completed, what they have left to do. And so any questions on the DARS, we have a couple of advisors that are in charge of the DARS system, and they can help you with any questions you have on that. And policies and procedures. So we also help students understand different policies on campus, like the drop and withdrawal policy, what an incomplete grade means, how do you petition for a late withdrawal or petition for exception to policy, 
Uh, students that are undeclared or pre-majors are assigned to university college. Uh, and so any petitions uh, would go through university college if they're undeclared or a pre-major. And then we also assist students with a new student transition. And so this can include new freshmen, but also new transfer students. So just helping them with that transition from high school to college or from another university to the University of Utah. Uh, and that's one reason the transfer center is housed within University College. It, they work a lot with transfer students uh, to help with that transition of getting into the, to the University of Utah. Uh, one of the big areas that University College works with is major exploration. So our key population is undecided students. And so we do a lot of things to work with students on major exploration. Uh, it could be through one-on-one -on -one advising, working with that student. We, there's a class we'll talk about a little bit later on major exploration. And so really University College's job is to get students out to the department advisors, <laughs> get them to find a major. Uh, we also work with students on academic performance. So students that may be struggling academically, if their cumulative GPA falls below 2.0, they go on academic warning. If they have a second semester with cumulative GPA and term GPA below 2.0, they'll go on academic probation. Third semester, cumulative and term below 2.0 will go to suspension. So any of those, they would work with the university college. So if they're on warning, they need to complete an online academic success workshop. Uh, if they're on probation, they need to meet with the university college advisor. If they're suspended and they're appealing to come back after they've set out for at least three semesters, they would work with the university college on that appeal. So. We also have advisors specifically focusing on pre-professional areas. And so pre-med, pre-dental, pre-law, um, pre-physical therapy, pre-occupational therapy. So we have a few advisors that focus specifically on those pre-professional areas. Uh, and so if students are interested in those, they can meet with one of those advisors. And then the other main area that students can go for advising is department advisors, which have a couple of department advisors. And we'll get to your section next, Paul. <laughs> um, and so some of the things department advisors are responsible for are major advising. So helping students understand the major, explore that particular major, understand what the requirements are, help students declare their major. And some majors are open where students can just come in and declare the majors. Others have admission requirements. Uh, so like social work, they have some prereqs that they need to complete before they can officially declare. Gender studies, they can come and declare. So, uh, also helping students with class selection for the major, so helping them plan out their schedule and choose the classes for the major. Uh, working with GPS, which is the graduation planning system. And so this is another, some more software that can help students plan out really all their classes through graduation. And so they can plan out each semester uh, all the way through graduation with the GPS. And then graduation advising. So department advisors work with students to help them make sure they've fulfilled all their requirements and get signed off for graduation. And then a lot of time may be in charge of program management, so different responsibilities within the department to manage the, the program in that department. And then we also have specialty advisors. So in addition to the general advising and department advising, a lot of students work with advisors in different specialty areas. And so these may include like TRIO, student support systems, educational opportunities program, CESA, the Center for Ethnic Student Affairs, uh, which is part of the Office for Equity and Diversity. Athletics has advisors, disability student services. Uh, so. Paul works in Office of Equity and Diversity, uh, working with students. And so and these students may still, they'll still work with general advisors and department advisors, but also working with these specialty advisors as well. And really with all of the advising, we have the general advising and we have department advising, the special, 
T advisors all come together to help and assist students in achieving their academic goals. Um, so, you know, we all have our pieces, but we overlap as well and, and really collaborate together to work with students. All right. So different academic advising programs. And so there are certain areas where students are required to have advising. And so new transfer students are required to meet with an advisor before they can register. And they also need to attend an orientation before they can register. And so you're likely to see advisors or students that are transferring, they'll need to meet with you before they can register for classes. Then we also have the mandatory advising program, which there's different checkpoints where students need to meet with an advisor. And later on today, Martina Stewart's gonna come and talk about the mandatory advising program in more detail. Um, but new freshmen are required to meet with an advisor during their first semester. Uh, second year at the U, again, they're required to meet with an advisor. If undecided students, if they're undeclared and they have 60 or more credit hours, then they're required to meet with an advisor to initiate major exploration, or they can take the UC 1050 major exploration class. And then at graduation, students are required to meet with their department advisor to get signed off for graduation. So all of those are required. And then for scholastic standards, so as I talked about before, if their GPA is below 2.0, then they'd be required to meet with an advisor as well. Uh, so, but students can meet with advisors anytime. So we have these required times, but students are welcome to meet with advisors at any time and really encouraged to meet with advisors whenever they have questions. And then graduation planning system, the GPS tool, can be used in conjunction with DARS for building long-term schedules. And, and so that's another time when they'd want to come in, work with their department advisor, not necessarily required, but it would be a good option for them. All right, so courses to promote academic success. So there are a number of courses taught through University College. One I mentioned before is UC 1050. This is a major exploration course. Uh, it's one credit and graded credit, no credit. And so we look at information that students need to know to choose a major, how to make a good decision, resources for exploring majors, having them do some research on different majors. Uh, we also have UC 1020, Introduction to Pre-Med Preparation. So students that are interested in med school, this helps them understand the process of applying to med school, what they need to be doing, what are the requirements. And then the same thing, UC 1030, Introduction to Pre-Dental Preparation, and UC 1060, Introduction to Pre-Law Preparation. So all of those, if they're interested in those pre-professional areas, those are great courses to help them understand the process and what they need to be doing. And then also have EdPsych 2600, which is Strategies for College Success. And so this is a class that can help with students with study skills, time management skills, looking at their learning styles, test taking skills, a lot of different skills to help them succeed in other classes. And all these are covered by financial aid? Yeah, and these would be covered by financial aid. They're four credit courses, just like anything else. Uh, they'll go as elective hours. They don't fulfill any general education requirements, uh, but they'll count toward the 122 credits needed for graduation. So, and then departments and colleges, also offer specific transition courses for their students. It just depends on the department, what they have, but a lot of departments have some courses for that as well. All right. So training, development, and support. So there's a number of different things that can help you as you're developing as an advisor. One thing you learn as an advisor is that the training never stops. There's always more, more to learn. I've been here for 10 years and I still get new questions and learn new things. So uh, different things that are out there to help. You have the University Academic Advising Committee, or UAC. And the, the UAC committee meets monthly on every third Thursday of the month, usually at 2 o'clock. And so that's a great meeting to come to to keep up to date on different things that are going on within the advising community on campus. Uh, it also includes updates from admissions and registrars and financial aid and different programs that are going on within advising. 
And so you're all welcome to attend those meetings. And then UAC in-service meetings, the second Thursday of each month, and I put generally because sometimes we move that around a little bit. For example, in May, it's going to be the third Thursday just because the second one falls right at the beginning of summer semester and, and people are going to be really busy. <laughs> so, uh, but generally, the second Thursday of the month, uh, different topics uh, that we'll focus on. Uh, we had the My U, My U Signature Experience, the last one. We have one on financial aid coming up, uh, one on LEAP and honors. Um, and then another thing you can do is get, make sure you're signed up on the UAC listserv. And the UAC listserv is an email where you can get updates on different things that are going on on campus, so reminders about the in-service meetings and other events that are going on, uh, basically any information that's relevant to advisors. Training, development, and support. So there's different things like advising basics that we're doing today. There's also training on the DARS and GPS systems, and so we'll have a training on those next month and offer those usually every couple months. And then also training on PeopleSoft, uh, which is the database for student information. Technology and tools, so we have PeopleSoft, and it's the official student record database. The access is controlled by the registrar's office, as we've talked about each of your access a little bit before we started. Uh, there's a lot of different things and you have to request different access. Uh, when you do the PeopleSoft, DARS, and GPS training, uh, then there, there's certain access things that we can help you get signed up for so that you have the majority of what you need. And then provides advisors with ability to view student information, make changes to student records, uh, and then, as I mentioned, the PeopleSoft training, it's provided by myself, Steve Hadley. And then additional training for some PeopleSoft function is offered by Clint Hayward uh, in Academic Computing Services. So I would do training on the Advisor Operator class, which covers basic information like being able to look up student grades, checking their declared major status, looking at transfer courses, looking at GPA, uh, and also on the mandatory advising program uh, responsibilities in PeopleSoft. And then Clint Hayward would train on other things that maybe are specific to your department. And degree audit report system, so we've talked about this a little bit. DARS is a document you can generate on behalf of the student or the student can generate it that shows all the degree requirements, what they've completed, what they have left to do. Uh, it's used by the gradu graduation office to clear students for graduation. So it is the, the official clearinghouse for graduation. Everything on the DARS needs to be green for a student to graduate. Uh, and it looks at historical information. So it also keeps a record of all the classes they've taken, their transfer work, their test scores. Uh, so a great resource to look at their academic record. And then GPS, again, we talked about a little bit, combines audits or DARS and roadmaps that are developed by the departments to create plans for students through graduation. And so it's a, basically an interactive major sheet. And then DARS and GPS training is provided by Rochelle War. Training development support, so ongoing support for advisors. We, once a year we have the U of U UAC advising conference and so this is a conference where advisors from across campus get together and able to attend different sessions on advising related topics and also it's a great opportunity to build a network with other advisors on campus. Um, so you find there's a hundred or so advisors on campus so a lot of people to get to know. And then advisor roundtables and special programs. So these are different programs that we have the end services, but also sometimes we have special topics uh, that we do in different roundtables or special programs as well. Uh, advisors must be knowledgeable of policies and issues that can impact students' progress toward their degrees, such as the court, course repeat policy, late withdrawal policy, uh, drop policy, different things like that, so they can help students achieve their academic goals. And then 
and visine technologies such as DARS, PeopleSoft, GPS, are really necessary to provide students with accurate information. Um, advisors have to be familiar with all components of the degree, be comfortable checking for each component in the DARS report, uh, must use PeopleSoft to look up student status, record advising notes, make appropriate changes to the student's records, uh, such as lifting holds when with the mandatory advising program, for example, they have a hold on the registration until they meet with the advisor, and the advisor is responsible for removing that hold. So advisors must develop best practices for communicating knowledge and information to students with whom they work, utilizing and advising as teaching philosophy, coupled with thorough knowledge of university and Utah resources and technology. Um, and so that's a general overview of the structure of advising at the University of Utah. And do we have any questions on anything? How many students are undeclared and undecided? How many students are undeclared and undecided? It's, that's a, it's a great question, and it's actually really hard to determine because when students apply for admissions, they, they can list a major and it puts them in a pre-major. And so we have students that are listed as undeclared, but we also have students that are listed as pre-major that are really undeclared. And, and we don't always know which ones are really pre-majors and which ones are undeclared. Um, and statistics vary 25 to 50%, <laughs> wide range, typically are undecided. Uh, and then even students that come in decided 60 to 70 percent change their major at some point. Uh, so majority of students are probably undecided at some point. <laughs> uh, Is the first point of contact for students usually the university college advising first, and then they filter them out the department until after? Yeah, so the first point of contact, generally university college, unless they know what their major, what they want to do, then they would go meet with that department. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be first point of contact, you see, but a lot of times that is the case. But like at orientation, when students meet with advisors, they're going to go to whatever department they're thinking about majoring in. Uh, yeah, uh, just because they're going to meet with an advisor, and university college is going to see the students that are undeclared, that really are undeclared and don't know what major they're going to do. And anything else? Or? All right. Thank you. And then Jency Brown.